Okay, hello and welcome to She TV, the place to become powerfully feminine from the inside out. I'm Candice Onida, if you haven't met me before, and um, I want to talk to you about an important topic today and give you some background to an important model that I've created, <clears throat> excuse me, with which to understand the feminine better. So uh, please come in and say hello if you're coming on live. I'd love to see you in the chat and to welcome you in today. Um, I am, um, I'm going to give you some context if I could. So today I'm talking to you about what I call uh, the pitfalls of the false feminine. Okay, the pitfalls of the false feminine. <clears throat> and you might be going, well, what, what is the false feminine? I've never heard of that before. And why would I want to know about the false feminine? Excuse me. <clears throat> So I'll give you a bit of background context. You know, my life, I was a very successful uh, commercial designer for the first 12 years of my career in Australia. I'm Australian. And then I moved from that to being a consultant and then to being an entrepreneur for the last 25 years. I haven't worked for anybody else but myself in 25 years. Um, uh, at around sort of late 30s, 37, 38, and then into my 40s, what ended up happening was a bit of a perfect storm in my life. A lot of things happened in my life that resulted in uh, me burning out and getting completely exhausted. And I just want to be really clear, when I talk about burning out, I mean energetic burnout, physical burnout, and really sort of emotional soul level burnout. Okay, so uh, sort of across the spectrum, I was burnt out. I was lost. I was alone. I'd lost my company. I'd lost all my money and my assets. I went into a bankruptcy. It was a pretty devastating time for me. And look, having a very ardent and real and devoted spiritual practice, I decided to go into full-time practice in that time. And amongst other things, you know, in the light of what I'm here to teach you and talk to you about, I discovered that, um, I know when sound root now it's so obvious, but I had done all of that, all of that success I'd had to to date. And by the way, I was a very, very successful entrepreneur. I had five successful companies. I was making, you know, a quarter of a million to a million dollars a year in annual earnings in those companies. I was, you know, for all intents and purposes, on the outside, I looked really successful. It was just that my deep core inner feminine soul was sort of slowly dying on the inside and you know the people or the women that tend to want to work with me are women that relate to having a, a core feminine soul let's put it that way okay so I realized that when I went to that burnout that I I had done all of that from this really strong masculine part of myself and I love my masculine and I love the masculine so People can take some of my videos out of context if they don't understand the full work, okay? That's why I do full in-depth trainings with women to give a full background and context. But I don't see the masculine or the feminine as better than one another. They are forces inside of us. They are inside all human beings. Um, and even when I'm going to talk to you about today, which is the false feminine, I want you to make sure, and I really insist on this, that you don't turn that into something that becomes a model or a way to dehumanize, debase, or judge somebody else. It's just a way to be able to learn, create more clarity, and to see and know yourself and others better. So please take it in that context. So when I realized that I was overly masculinized, I went, okay, well, I want to become feminine. What does that look like? I didn't and hadn't had any real role models and certainly any sort of systematic mentorship on what that meant, right? So I underwent like years of research, application, trial and error into what that actually was. And what I discovered also, by the way, being a, a trained astrologer for 20 years, um, and one of the things we learn in astrology is that there is a higher and a lower mode of all planetary forces. And it's one of the main things when lenses through which to and look at somebody's chart, you know, their astrology chart. And I had this huge epiphany, which is, oh my gosh, so much of the world is perceiving the masculine feminine through the lens of the false or the lower mode. 
And they went, oh, this is a problem. This is why, this is where all the conflict's happening. This is where all the drama's happening. This is where people are stuck on this gerbil wheel that they are not getting off. And I wanted to get off it. And in the process of me discovering what it meant, what it felt like to be in the true feminine, to be in the queen, to be in the priestess, I realized that that was gonna be my great passion to show other people how to do that. So I just wanna see if anybody's here, if turned up today. Ah, we've had some people turn up to my ad hoc. It's Neha, beautiful. Hello, Crystal and Freedom Flavor and Cherry Love. Welcome. I'm glad you found me on here today. I know this was not planned or scheduled. It's great to have you on board. Okay, so the pitfalls of the false feminine. The reason why I want to pass this to you is, again, not as a judgment, not as a way to bash yourself up, because of course that actually comes from the false feminine or the false levels of ourselves. And we want to encourage you toward the true, you know, where the opening and the power is and the emancipation and the sense of freedom. Another thing I want to state here is to just be really clear, She TV and the work that I teach is about inner power, about inner connection, about diving in deep, sourcing where the real problems are so that they can be changed at their source for good. Okay, this is why I talk about she TV is where we become powerfully feminine from the inside out. There are thousands of YouTube channels out there that can talk to you about hair and makeup and clothing, and they're great, but it's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about how to create deep, real, foundational change inside of you. Now, I've used this analogy a lot in when I teach spiritual work and meditation, but if you walk into a room and there's a really strong smell in the room, you can do one of two things. One, you can go and get some air freshener and try to cover up the smell. Um, um, and the smell just keeps getting worse and worse from week to week and you just keep trying to cover the smell up but you have no interest in finding out where the smell's coming from. Or two, you can source the smell. So we go into that room and we start looking around and diving underneath the furniture and going in deep and looking in the cupboards and you discover that there's a dead rat underneath the couch. Now. We're also not going to go back to one and just put a bunch of blankets or cover up things or just spray the dead rat, right? That's, that's not going to change anything. What we do is we find the dead rat, we get it out of the room, and then we clean up. That's what I'm talking about. Now, if that's a kind of offensive metaphor, the truth is those things inside of ourselves that are very painful and really hurt they stink. <laughs> they stink inside of our consciousness. And what we want to do is we want to source them, we want to find them, we want to excise them out of our energy. So I'm here to have real conversations with you about real issues and problems that we're having as women in order that we can actually find the source of them and change them at their source. This is what the true feminine does. She has the courage and the, the courage of heart and spirit to go to the real work and do the real work. Okay, so I'm talking about the pitfalls of the false feminine. So what is the false feminine you're probably thinking? So one thing I want you to understand um, at its core and essential is the false feminine is a world of the victim. Both of them. Now I've got the false feminine and we've got the true feminine. The false feminine in my model is called the maid and the princess. And the reason why I created two archetypes uh, in the false feminine is because they they show up a little bit differently. Now another thing I want you to understand is in my model this is something that we can all fall into. So you either live a lot of your life in the false feminine or you can fall into the false feminine. Hence the need to be very very compassionate and have self-love and self-care for yourself about this because there's triggers in our life that can make us fall down. So I'm wanting you to understand what that is in order that you can feel it better in yourself. Hello, Daldol. Hello, Vesa. Welcome, welcome, beautiful. Okay, so let me start with the maid if I could, okay? So the maid doesn't have any faith in life. She doesn't believe that the life, that life or the divine is going to provide for her. She uh, has very, very low self-esteem, a low sense of self-worth. 
and she doesn't believe that anything can change this. She sees herself sort of at the very, very bottom end of the totem pole of some perception of where she sits in the world, that she's not valuable and that she's not valued or loved or lovable. Okay. Um, she's always in servitude to things or people. Yeah, she's not in service of, she's in servitude to. She's always under or second or secondary and feels that way and doesn't feel like she has power to express herself, to come out and shine, or that she's actually um, uh, can express herself and her needs in life and especially in relationship dynamics. Okay. So just breathe for a second and just get a sense if you can recognize the maiden yourself or anybody else in your life, okay? Okay. So again, we need to have compassion for the false feminine. So let's not make it a judgment. Let's just acknowledge and feel. All right. So the other of the false feminine is called the princess in my model, the princess archetype. Um, the thing is the princess is also a victim but she is what is called the rabid victim the reason why is she's a protester she creates drama and conflict she's always wanting herself to be heard like those protesters that scream through that loud hailer i need to be heard okay she insists on being heard even if what she has to say isn't very good or is in fact just not real okay she fights she creates division and collusion, okay? So a princess will do a thing where she pulls people into her mission. This, and it's often against something or someone else. So that person is doing something wrong and she'll create a little posse of collusion against somebody and someone else. Now this is the worst. This person does not understand sisterhood or collaboration or community at all. They'll create a little posse and when that's all blown over, that posse will disseminate. She doesn't know how to hold people up to their best. She wants to pull them down into her world, okay? Um, she is incredibly outward focused and image focused. She's all about what she looks like. She takes her cues from the world around her about what she's supposed to think and look like and act like. She doesn't take her, her references from inside of herself. She constantly changes it because of what she sees outside of herself. She creates a lot of conflict. Uh, she's dramatic. She uses fight and drama to get her needs met. But the problem is she doesn't actually really know what her true desires and needs are. So she's fighting for something that is not really real. Uh, the princess can be a bit in touch with her sexual energy, but she often uses it to manipulate others. Okay. She also, like the maid, feels very separate from others, but she's constantly trying to buy her way inside something. Okay. So let's just have a moment of feeling whether there is a princess inside of us and what sort of triggers might trigger her in yourself or you also might recognize her in other people. Ah, oh, again, doing this from a compassionate stance. Yeah. Okay, if anybody wants to share anything about that, please do here in the chat or in the description box below. Now, as I am uh, sharing with you, I want to encourage you, the conversations I'm having go deeper in my new Facebook group called Smart Savvy Sexy. I have a link below and a link be above here. To join our group smart savvy sexy i'd love to have you inside that facebook group uh, where i go deeper on a lot of the topics i bring up here on she tv i'd love to have you on board okay so the big pitfall the big realization i had about the false feminine and in fact the false masculine is that it's a place in which we get stuck and get in these sort of we call a gerbil wheel in american you just go around and around and around and there's no resolution at that level there's no emancipation there's no freedom and there's no sense of yourself standing in the best of yourself 
you are definitely not seated in your throne. You are pulled and pushed by the world around you when you're in the false feminine and you are too outwardly focused. Okay, you are the, the false feminine, especially the princess, is very self-centered and selfish. Whereas the true feminine is what I call self-full. She's full because she's plugged into her source. She's plugged into her energy. She's plugged into her sense of inner power, her divine power, her sense of inner reference. She's not solo in that. She actually also knows a lot about community and collaboration and in fact sisterhood. A sisterhood in which we, in, in which we actually elevate everybody to be in their queen. There is, we know as a queen that there is room for everybody to be a queen at that level. And there's no need to have to fight or defend your territory. Okay. Okay. Let's see if you've got any questions. Beautiful. It's so good to feel, feel you all here today. I just wanted to give you a sense of the pitfalls of the false feminine and to just start you thinking and looking through this lens of the false feminine so that you can see, oh, that's actually not the true feminine. That is not. I'll talk about that at another time. But I wanted to get some clarity here about what the false feminine is in yourself, in others. And please remember, don't use the model to be judgmental or to dehumanize anybody else. Use it compassionately uh, toward yourself and others. And it's a way in which to see the world and see through this particular lens, <clears throat> through this particular model. So once again, I encourage you, we continue this conversation over at Smart Savvy Sexy Facebook group. I've got a connection above, a link above and a link below. Love to have you join that community so we can dive in deeper together. And if you do have any comments, you can put them below in the comments box. And if you like the video today, the live stream, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe over here too. And I always love getting your questions and suggestions about videos moving forward too. So as always, I'm here to serve you, sending you much, much love, and I will be back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.